Support for LAS comes from Casa of Los Angeles, a nonprofit organization working one on one with children in the child welfare system to ensure they have support in education, health care, and housing. Just showing up is extraordinary. More at CasaLA.org. If you're looking for a gift that says, I love you and I love LA, check out the LAS Holiday Gift Guide at LAS.com slash gift guide. LAS Studios. Today on the LA Report, Southern Californians with family in Gaza are watching this humanitarian crisis unfold from afar. The LA Dodgers make a deal with yet another Japanese pitcher. And public media lion Ruth Seymour has died. It's Friday, December 22nd. I'm Sharon McNary in for Nick Roman. This is the LA Report from LAist 89.3. The death toll in Gaza has now passed 20,000 people. Nearly 85% of Gaza's population has been displaced since Israel declared war on Hamas after that. October 7th attack that killed 1,200 people. Southern Californians with family in Gaza are watching this humanitarian crisis unfold from afar. Lawai Albasunian is a Palestinian-American engineer who grew up in Gaza and lives here in Los Angeles. His parents were visiting Gaza when the war began, and they've been trapped there since. We've been trying to keep calling. I mean, I call her 100 times a day, and you might get lucky to talk to them for a second or two. And, you know, sometimes it takes two weeks for that call to catch. He's asking the Red Cross and U.S. and German governments to help his parents escape. A group of parents in Culver City are celebrating after their efforts ensured that another gun store would not open next to an elementary school. L.A.'s Jillian Moran Perez has that story. The former Martin B. Redding Incorporated gun store stood out like a sore thumb on the west side of Culver City. Within a thousand feet stands a park, mosque, church, and La Bayona Elementary School. When PTA parents found out the store was for sale, they took action. They say their children didn't feel safe having a gun store next to their school. Here's Melody Hansen. It wasn't about gun ownership or Second Amendment rights or anything. It's just about a gun store should not be next to a school. The community shared their concerns. The city didn't want to see another gun store at the location either. But the 65-year-old business was exempt from a 2005 law that prohibited gun retailers from operating 1,000 feet away from a school. So after months of lobbying by local parents, the solution became clear. The city purchased the property for $6.5 million. Now the city plans to work with the community to decide what will take its place. For LAist 89.3, I'm Jillian Moran Perez. The L.A. Dodgers have made a record deal with yet another Japanese pitcher. Yoshinobu Yamamoto reportedly signed a 12-year, $325 million contract less than two weeks after two-way superstar Shohei Otani announced he's headed to the Dodgers. L.A.'s Josie Huang says this is all solidifying Dodger fandom overseas. In Torrance, travel agent Yoshi Miyajima says his agency is gearing up to book trips for Japanese baseball fans coming to Dodger Stadium. Even more people is interested now since two players coming. Miyajima says that in Japan, the Dodgers are in a popularity contest with the New York Yankees. But right now, no Japanese pitchers in Yankees. Pitchers in Japan tend to get more attention, says Nicholas Watanabe. He teaches sports management at the University of South Carolina. So a lot more people are going to be watching. Of course, that means more brands, more business advertisers all want to be part of that. Before Otani and Yamamoto, nine other Japanese-born players have put on Dodger blue, starting with Hideo Nomo in 1995. The newcomers will debut with the Dodgers in Asia when the team opens their 2024 regular season in Seoul against the San Diego Padres. For LAist 89.3, I'm Josie Huang. Coming up, LA's been collecting the rain we've had all this week. What are they going to do with it? 
Support for LAIS comes from Casa of Los Angeles, a nonprofit organization that organizes community volunteers to take action and advocate for children and families in LA County's overburdened child welfare and juvenile justice systems. Casa LA works to strengthen the community by ensuring that all children and families have equitable access to resources and support to thrive. Just showing up is extraordinary. You can learn how to make a difference in a child's life who needs Casa support at casala.org. Hi, it's Suzanne Whatley. The L.A. Report is perfect for getting you a quick hit of the day's top stories. For a deeper and broader look at the news, join me for NPR's Morning Edition. Starting at 5 a.m., we get you the day's breaking news stories, local, national, and worldwide, and give you a little joy and delight to start your day right. Morning Edition, weekdays from 5 to 9 on the radio at LAist 89.3 and on the LAist app. This is the L.A. Report. I'm Sharon McNary, in for Nick Roman. L.A. County's been collecting rain all week in reservoirs and dams and streams. So what happens to all that stormwater? Elias reporter Yusra Farzan has the details. The collected stormwater first goes to a sediment trap and then to spreading facilities in the county's foothill areas. Here, the water seeps into the ground. The water is collected around 200 feet below the surface, and then wells are drilled to pull it out of the ground. It is then treated before it makes its way into our taps. So how long does this all take? Mark Pestrella, the L.A. County Public Works Director, has the answer. When we actually percolate the water through those basins into the ground, it can take up to 25 years for a drop of water that went from our dam down all the way to the, into the basin. This week alone, L.A. County has collected 1.2 billion gallons of water, which is enough to serve 30,000 people for a year. For L.A. 79.3, I'm Yusra Farzan. Public media lion Ruth Seymour has died. She transformed KCRW-FM from a struggling signal in Santa Monica into one of the country's most successful public radio stations. She joined Larry Mantle on AirTalk back in 2010 when she retired from KCRW. Listen, I'm not that much of an egotist that I believe that KCRW is created in my image because I don't think that's true. I know people have said that, but it isn't the case. People listen to KCRW because of the people who are on KCRW. Under her 32-year guidance, the station became a source of news, music, and talk that shaped Los Angeles culture with iconic programs like Morning Becomes Eclectic, To the Point, and groundbreaking news program Which Way L.A. Seymour died at her home in Santa Monica today. She said her mission statement for KCRW was just two words, be important. She was 88. Read more about Ruth Seymour at LAist.com, where you'll also find the L.A. Report and all the stories you heard today. Thanks for listening to the L.A. Report. I'm Sharon McNary in for Nick Roman. Be sure to listen again tomorrow when Julia Paskin brings you the L.A. Report Weekend Edition. The L.A. Report is produced by Libby Rainey and Tiffany Ujiye. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse is the director of content development. Our engineer, Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about this evening's stories at LAist.com. You can also listen live on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. Listeners like you help make the L.A. Report possible, so please donate at LAist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe that quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. Imagine if you could charge your electric vehicle at the places you already love to eat, shop, and play. Whether you're at the movies, on your weekly grocery trip, or running errands at your local mall, Volta EV charging stations are built around your day-to-day and located in your community and nationwide. All you have to do is check in, plug in, and go about your day. It's EV charging made convenient. Download the Volta app to find your new favorite place to charge.